Some of the other LCSs, once we get all of them built, a few will be a mine warfare ship, some will be an anti submarine warfare ship, and then surface warfare. So Sioux City eventually will be outfitted with two 30 millimeter guns, uh, remote control from down in combat, basically there's a camera on it, they point and shoot. Like a video game, but with actual bullets. Uh, we'll also have the helicopter and drones, kind of like you saw up in the hangar. And then it comes with kind of our boarding team, which are integrated into our crews. Uh, like Mr. Kickbush is one of the boarding officers for our crew, so he's trained to do all the boardings that we have to go board drug runners or pirates. He's the guy that goes out and does that. And Coast Guard will kind of be the lead base so because of law enforcement requirements. It is. It is a very joint operation. And all the drug ops, so that's right there. It lifts off and we can drop anything in here. Um, so for some of the packages, it'll actually come with a jet ski pretty much what we are. Um, we've got two water jets on the ends that are steerable. Then we can cha change them left, right. We can open and we can close them so we can stop the ship pretty fast. Um, don't have rudders. No rudders, it's all water jets. And then we have two jets in the middle that are positioned straight aft. Those are our boost jets. Those are our go fast jets. Get over certain, certain speed, we uh, engage those. And that gives us our ability to push so much water out that we can. I think the engine's kind of based on like the DC-10 engine. Oh, a lot of horsepower. We also have two 16-cylinder uh, turbo diesels to provide power as well. Oh. So all told, we're pushing about 116,000 horsepower. So with that, we're going to start working our way up. serving you also through kind of the old tradition custom. Um, but here, I grab my train from there, goes in with everybody else, Captain does the same. And the support room's a little bit more formal, it's kind of where the officers are, so there's still that split between them. You're probably looking at about 12 chiefs or so, officer-wise, CCOXO, Ops Chain, CSO, four second tours, and a couple first tours, you're looking about 12 officers at most. So, CO and XO are both commanders. Alright, so welcome to the pilot house, where we drive the ship from. So what's the first thing you notice in here that we don't have? No steering wheel, alright? So, we drive with what is called a combinator. So, combines thrust and steering. One little thing here that we can turn and do whatever. Yeah. That'd be that every time I touch it. Well, so a lot of different ways we can drive this thing. I can put both my steerable jets on the one combinator and just drive them one. Usually our easy way for ground nodes, we can do that. I can split them. So I can control my left jet with this one, my right jet with this one, and you can make this ship do some pretty cool things. So we don't have a bow thruster. But by knowing how the vectors work and how the waters work, along with a ton of training that we've gone through. So anybody that drives these things on through a 40 day course, taught by a bunch of high speed ferry drivers, pilots, on how to, how to drive these things. We spend 40 hours, 14 hours a day in a simulator driving these things. We can take this ship and walk it straight sideways. Excuse me, ship. Honestly, most of the time, 95% of the driving we do is in autopilot. 
Mm -hmm. Because we're so minimally manned, we have so few people, on a destroyer or something like that, you're looking at about 10 plus people on the bridge. For us, we'll have four. We'll have an engineer who sits back here controlling the entire engineering plant. Everything's touch screen. So if he wants to start an engine, he press start engine and he does that. So everything's controlled up there. Um, he'll have one lookout, he's just up here to make sure we don't hit anything. Uh, so for other ships coming in, we'll have one guy over here at the left seat, junior officer of the deck. He's in charge of navigation and radar. And then you'll have an officer of the deck over here who's in charge of the ship. He's also the one hands-on control driving. Whereas a destroyer of a helmsman, a junior guy that is actually hands on the wheel just listening to commands, the person who's actually in charge of the ship is the one driving the ship. So officer of the deck, usually one of our senior first tour division officers or second tour division officer like Mr. Kickwish will be in charge of the ship. He's the captain's representative on the bridge. So, uh, usually about four to five hours, depending on how we rotate. Uh, we, we, there's been a lot of studies recently with the collisions and everything. Uh, so a lot of studies now where they're trying to do what's called a circadian rhythm watch bill, where you stay in the same watch every day. Okay. Uh, that way, it used to be back when I started 11 years ago was I would stand a five hour watch and then the next day my watch would break, like shift back five hours so every like three days I would end up staying up for over 24 hours straight. Mm -hmm. Not that safe up here while you're driving a $400 million fortune. So um, yeah so it changed a lot so usually four, four to five hours and hopefully enough people qualify where you get some good rotation where you're not staying up for 24 hours at a time. So it's, it's hard with a lot, uh, a lot less people. Yeah. So we autopilot everything here, even when we do underrated replenishments. When we drive 180 feet away from an oiler, the hose is attached, we're in autopilot wow. the entire time. Um, ship's very maneuverable. Like I said, we've got those MC-30 engines pumping out 116,000 horsepower. Um, Compare that to a destroyer with about 100,000 horsepower, we weigh three times less. Mm -hmm. So really fast, a lot, water. a lot shallower water. But one of the cool things about our jets is we can sit there, if I go full back, it will close my jets. And all that water will come rushing forward. What that does is allows me to stop the ship and the ship went. So I can go from 40 knots to nothing. Right. And like a football field. How about sea states? How heavy a sea state can you handle? We we can handle 12 foot seas. It won't be fun. We can do it. Um, maybe more. I don't want to, but we can. Um, but because of the shallow draft, the ship moves around. It, it's not. You got to get your sea legs. Take a gram of mean and <laughs> yeah. and hope for the best. Uh, how far does she roll? I don't know, what did it do? I, I think I'd roll like 10, 12 degrees on her. Oh, 13, 13, 14 on my back. Was it 13, that, 14 on her? Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, I remember that roll. <laughs> I remember that one. We rolled. So 13, 14 degrees would roll on this. My old, my frigate, I've rolled 24, 25 degrees before. So, mm -hmm. which you're walking on the wall at that point. Yeah, but, right. Yeah. Uh, it's not comfortable. Um, but if we have a decent sea state and we get up on speed and kind of the ship gets up on plane, like a speedboat, mm -hmm. she's smooth. So, so you only have one enlisted man on watch up here? Usually our yeah, lookout yeah. and usually our uh, engineering uh, officer will be a chief or senior chief. Right, our junior officer deck could be a chief as well. So there's no limit on who can get qualified. So I've been up a lot with, with chiefs up here on watch as well. So. All right, we're gonna head down to the folks over here and check out our gun. Um, first off, see us out of me for you. So I can try to save my voice for a little bit and start to go on. Right. You shoot 220 rounds a minute, uh, which which is excellent. If you notice the rust, the rust marks that you see right here, this is where the casing that gets spat out pretty violently into the deck. Um, and uh, we, 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 we,
myself a shot, I believe, around 268 rounds uh, from from this gun right here. Uh, we did that during our combat uh, trials where we had to shoot down drones, uh, uh, automated uh, automated small boats coming at us, as well as just large, uh, large red balloons that were placed in the water for us. Um, so this is mostly a defensive gun? Is that it? It's, it has capability for both. Okay. Um, yeah, it's uh, compared to a five, uh, five inch on a destroyer, it's definitely more defensive in that regard. Uh, it's not going to have as much range as a five inch, but it, uh, it it's very precise when it's within its effective range. So what's its range? Uh, about four to eight miles. So this is like about a three inch gun? Uh, yeah, about about the, yeah, a little bit. What's your rate of fire roughly? Two, uh, 220 rounds per minute. How long could you sustain that? Uh, for, Until she's for, empty? Uh, for about, uh, that'd be, yeah, for about 35 seconds. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And then she'd, uh, then she'd be empty and we have to reload. <laughs> so. our, our magazine downstairs can hold, can hold a, a, quite a few rounds. So yeah, we could, uh, Basically below that scuttle right there, below your feet right now, that's where the, uh, the magazine is. And as long as you got a, got a gunner's mate down there, open up around, you'll be able to keep going. So you basically go load underneath the deck and then come It up. comes right up Yep, here. it comes right up into, oh, the, right into, into the, the drums the... that you see in the back. Yeah, okay. back the, the, gun the gun's there. open in the back. Yeah. Okay. Um, to, do that, though, to, to do that, though, you would have to stop firing so that the gun could actually load. That's a quick process. It is. It is a quick process. Like what? Ten seconds. Yeah, you'd have to elevate. It would, it would slide in, and then you. Hey, it's quick. Back in. So you got your main magazine, and then you have to restart. Which is, so everything yeah. down there is what we've got. Yeah, that's the mag that's magazine. That's all down the there. Room. And then you'll see. Then you'll see the drums. Uh, basically, the two center pieces on each side of the gun. Uh, in inside, if you go back in the, in the back and look, and they got racks. That, those are what's going to be holding your. 57 millimeter rounds. But after 35 seconds, you're all done? Within Just what's in here, with everything that's in here. Oh, okay. Yeah, within the gun. And then we've got, we, we can hold enough here to yeah, kind of do whatever you we could, need to do. You could sustain for quite a while as long as you have that person downstairs pumping more rounds in, into the hoist. So. Camera. Yeah, we have a camera <laughs> up uh, up top. You can see the small, the, the small... Little circle. Yeah, the small above circle the that's dome. right underneath the radars there uh, and above the dome. And that's uh, there's a guy part. downstairs with the camera. Yeah. We got it. Guy with the gun, camera, just aiming her and pull the trigger. So. Yeah. So it is an accurate gun. It's yeah. very accurate. It's basically a big red balloon. So it's probably about from. Made a uh, Lieutenant Kibbush here square yeah. that we throw over the side and shoot. Um, and we also shot at some, uh, some boats that they remote piloted at us, like dri driving pretty much full speed straight at us. And we we go all. Sure for me we actually yeah. yeah, so we, we shot at those and we shot at some drones flying at us too and sunk them. Um, <laughs> Sorry. And there was also some missile package that they're working on uh, for some Hellfire missiles that we can shoot out as well. But yeah, like man overboard, we can drive. We can drive this ship right up next to them. Um, the small boat can get right out. Actually, we have our small boat, but it takes longer to get that small boat out than for the ship to maneuver. Not maneuverable. Right, we're we're so we're so quick. We're required to be able to do it in seven minutes to get maneuver to the guy and get a swimmer down, touching the man. At seven these, minutes. These props are jets. Jets, yeah. water jets. Um, That's so seven minutes is our, our standard. Most of the officers, because of how well trained we are, three to four minutes we can get this ship next to the guy to get a swimmer in the water. So we're pretty maneuverable. And I'd say these guys are pretty well trained to, to drive this thing. And if we're not on the ship, like we're in the simulators all the time. Just training. There's a way to clean it out. It just. It'll get it'll get pushed straight through. We're There's pushing. I think what a swimming pool size of water, the amount of water in seconds. Or? I was told ten tons a second. Yeah, yeah. it's some. It's wow. a ridiculous amount of water yeah. that comes out. Wow. Oh, like the sea jet coming in. I mean, she, she'll uh, she'll suck up a pot. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah like we, we try to avoid them, but 
Yeah. Yeah. At night, sometimes. You just can't do a whole tech. You do have a whole tech issue that is trained in welding. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you know. Just we don't have the. But he does yeah. not have a lot. He does not have a lot of uh, equipment at his disposal here. We don't. We don't have. We don't have really a machine shop for him. Um, we do a lot of stuff in Ford. We, we require a lot of assistance. The more maintenance that we do outside of very basic stuff is contracted. So every four to six weeks, we spend a week of doing maintenance. We're having people come in and do maintenance for us. And that allows us to stay a small group. When we're fully manned, I think we are. So, for instance, our blue crew, even though we're off haul, we should have about 70 people. We have 56. That's, yep. that's 14 people we're missing. That, that's a big deal. Mainly when we start getting into ports. Um, when we get on hold, we have to stand watch. That's where the difficulties come in. Is I have, like even for this ship, has 62 people. So they're pretty close. But I still sent 10 people up from our crew to go stand at the end of the pier with guns for them. So everybody that you pass down there in the, the camo at the end of the pier are from the awful crew that flew up here to help them. And they, they did the same for us. The whole crew did the same. The entire crew came up for commissioning in Annapolis for us. Uh, and whenever we go to place, there will almost never be a time where the ship is underway without a mix of the crews. Even if it's one or two people, like you lose people, somebody gets hurt, or somebody has a family emergency, or whatever it is, and they need help. And uh, two crews, one ship, but it's all one team, one fight for us. So. Everybody does damage control, everybody fights the ship. Um, so everybody is cross-trained in a lot of different things. Um, so like, particular, it'll be an officer of the deck, it'll be a boat officer, it'll be a boarding officer, a locker leader. Well, yeah, investigator, right? Investigator, so will get, do damage control. When we pull into port, you'll stand either officer of the deck out at the thing, and soon to be command duty officer in charge of the ship in port. So, everybody has a laundry list of jobs, mm -hmm. whether we're in port or underway. So, and then on top of that, he has to run his division because he owns all the weapons on the ship. Any type of happy hour? You see everybody even on here, they're standing duty one day, and then the next day they're giving tours. So everybody's working. We're here giving tours the entire day and then events all night. Can we get off the boat here? <laughs> we're trying. <laughs> so they, everybody will have at least a day off. We have good restaurants downtown. Yeah, we went over there for lunch today.